Hey guys, welcome back today. My name's Reese. Thanks for checking out the channel and today's video. The topic of whether or not you need a mentor to achieve success in your chosen career path is pretty debatable. However, it's relatively common knowledge just that by working with others on a similar career path, maybe a few years ahead of you, by doing so, it'll help you avoid certain pitfalls and progress quicker toward your goals. And so in today's video, we're talking about mentors and specifically how to find them. However, I do want to point out that I think it's very important we all know there are different types of mentors. In this video, we'll chat about how to find an in-person mentor. However, I also consider um, the authors of some of my favorite business books, as well as certain financial YouTubers to be mentors of mine, even though they have no idea who I am. It's important to keep in mind that there's different types of mentors. So you have your in-person mentor that we'll chat about today on how to find that person. However, you have authors of great business books as well as YouTubers and other mentors out there that are not in-person mentors, but just as important. However, an in-person mentor will be someone that can help you through in-the-moment decisions, that can help you with scenarios specific to you and your business. And therefore, I do believe they are a valuable addition to your team. So guys, before we really dive into that today, I'd love to ask you guys to please like this video, comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. It really helps me out, and I greatly appreciate it. So thank you so much, everyone, and let's dive right in. Now, I think many people are looking for a mentor today to help them really get started on their career or in their business. However, I believe this is really incorrect thinking and incorrect timing when searching for a mentor. When searching for a good mentor, you really need to prepare yourself first to be mentored. And there's a lot to do before you even start your search for that person. This person is someone who can help you through an advanced scenario and not really spoon feed you basic information. And so the first step on finding a mentor is to first educate yourself in your field. That seems super simple, right? However, this will be a time consuming first step. You really need to start taking in as much information as you can from reputable sources, so books on your industry or YouTube videos on your industry and start learning the basics about that field. The fact of the matter is that good mentors should be active in their industry and they should be focused on building their own businesses. And they shouldn't really have time nor want to be giving you this basic information that you should already be able to figure out yourself through some Google searches or by reading a couple books. And so for real estate, for example, you shouldn't be asking a mentor how to analyze a rental property as that's common information. I have a video on it myself and about a dozen other people on YouTube have made videos on how to analyze rental properties. It's very accessible information. However, a mentor instead should be pointing out things on your analysis such as, well, did you know the county is raising taxes in this area next year? Or did you know that that business is actually closing up shop, etc. Things like that, where they're meant more to take a high level look at something you've already done and provide feedback. And so, like I said, I strongly believe you should spend a substantial amount of time on this first step, really building your knowledge base first. This can be done through books, YouTube videos, Google searches, anything really. And this should be done before looking for that mentor. Step number two will be to get to work in your field. So you've got the knowledge now, but now it's time to put that knowledge to work and take action. I think we all know that person who, for example, seems to know really everything about real estate investing and is an expert in the field. However, all they own is their home. They have no rental property. And that's because they completed the first step successfully. They learned a bunch about the topic or they're just opinionated, but let's pretend they've actually educated themselves but they never took action. They never took that second step and bought that first rental property. Let's face it, when it comes to real estate, the field that I'm in, buying a duplex, a cheap duplex, maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars, is not going to bankrupt you. Unless you just really didn't take the time to learn how to analyze a property and then analyze that property, not much can go wrong with one duplex. And yeah, maybe this first duplex won't really make you a bunch of money, it may just break even. However, that first step of taking action shows future mentors that you've put the effort forward to learn and take action and you'll be worth their time if they decide to mentor you. Step number three is to become active in your community. Now at this point, you're well on your way to becoming successful in your field with or without a mentor. You've educated yourself, you've taken action, and now's the time to really start networking. 
and through networking will be how you find your mentor most likely. Now the way I've done this is through Facebook. We have in Columbus a group called Cream and it's a bunch of real estate professionals, whether property managers, investors, agents, accountants, lawyers, whatever. There's a bunch of people in the group. And it's a very active community where a lot of people are posting questions or helpful tips. And in this scenario, a great way to start your search for a mentor is to become active in that community. Start adding value. Because you've spent that time learning about your field and you've started to form your own opinions on things, you can start answering questions in a group like this. And as you become active, you'll start to see those people that are answering a lot of questions. There are people that are in real estate doing a lot of deals. And you can really start to sense who the movers are in that group and you can start to build relationships by adding value to them. And this doesn't have to be just Facebook. This, this could be in-person meetups, it could be networking events, conferences, whatever. The idea is to become involved and start trying to add value to these experienced people. And step four is to solve the problems of these people. Finally, by being active in that community, you've started to become noticed as a mover in that industry, someone who has an opinion and someone who's adding value. And now's the time to find those top performers and start adding value to them and solving their problems. Now, when it comes to real estate in my field, there's only really a couple ways to add value and that's by making somebody money or solving a problem of theirs. And so as a real estate agent and an investor, when I started my search for a mentor, I found someone through a friend who was a great real estate agent and an even better investor. And I asked them if they could help me find a rental property as that would earn them a commission and make them money. And now this specific person didn't have any time. However, because they knew I was serious, they referred me to actually their business partner at the time who was an agent as well and a successful investor. And because I had spent the time educating myself, I knew my investment criteria, I knew the type of investment I was looking for, I filtered properties quickly, I found a property I wanted, and I put an offer in and closed quickly on that property, making that agent money. And I portrayed myself as a young professional, not someone who needed to be spoon-fed and have every little thing explained to them. And so when this same person found out that I was becoming a real estate agent, as I wasn't yet licensed, they invited me to join their team because they saw how professionally I worked through the purchase of this rental property. And so in conclusion, keep in mind that this is a give and take and don't just focus on what you can receive from somebody else. Focus instead on how you can provide more to others and in return, I guarantee over the long term, that value they return to you will be more than worth your time. And now even though since then I've moved on to a new brokerage and a new team, I'm still very close friends with that agent as well as the initial person who referred me to that person because they saw I was serious and I continued to build that relationship over time. Now I can call them up if I have a question or buy them lunch because they know I'm not going to waste their time with trivial questions. In addition, when I do meet up with these mentors, I always try to ask them what I can do for them or try to perceive what kind of problems they're experiencing at that time. So it's not just once again, a take relationship, but I can give back to them. So with that said, everyone, I hope that's helpful for you and that you all enjoyed this video. So please, if you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and comment below as well as subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'd really appreciate it and I'd love to see you all in the next video. So once again, guys, thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.